Welcome to today's episode of The Bald Book Geek. Like, sub, do the usual. If you want uncensored versions of these videos, exclusive early access, and more, check out my Patreon page. And also, for exclusive content on YouTube, consider becoming a member. I hope you guys enjoy today's episode, and let's start the show. <laughs> Writers, why should I buy your book? Why should I go to a store and drop £25 on your brand new shiny hardback if I don't know who you are, I've never read anything by you, and your only information about your book on the internet is a paragraph in The Guardian by an academic colleague? Why can't I go to the library, read your book, return it if I hate it, or end up buying it if I love it, because that does happen to me more often than it probably should. You might be my next favourite writer. But according to Wellard Willard Nowinski, you can't buy books if you're poor. You should have you can't consume news or media if you're poor. And you can only buy books from Amazon and if you're a middle class person who loves reading you should be paying for everything. So middle class in, middle, in the US versus the UK means something quite different. Um, we won't get into that in, in terms of just, we'll be here for weeks and it's not worth a discussion. You know, a typical Hollywood clown who seems to be all share the wealth and down with billionaires, but an anti-capitalism in some of it, very contradictory Twitter account but cries that writers aren't making money. So, if you are a writer and you have books in the UK library system, there is a scheme that you can use, and it's a really good scheme. The Public Lending Right, the PLR scheme, provides authors with an income of up to 6600 a year from loans of their books from public libraries in the UK and pays out more than $6 million annually. There are smaller groups in the US that will buy books by the truckload to keep them in the library system. So effectively, you've been paid. Let's be real. How much you make from your book sale, if you're a traditionally published writer, is not going to be much. Your income is not going to be some Brett Easton Ellis level celebrity party. It's going to be you probably working your day job with your £1,000 front fee and hopefully your book will sell a dozen copies in a year. I see a lot of writers on the internet that, especially in trade publishing and indie spaces actually, that cry that people should just buy their book. How dare someone give it a bad review because they work so hard on it. Why should they promote their book? People should just buy it. It's the publisher's job. No, it's not. Not anymore. The publishing industry is basically dead. When an independent novel written by someone in their living room is outselling your average top 40 sales chart, there's a problem. And a lot of it, if you want the honest truth, is writers. So I'm going to say this here and now. If you want to buy books cheap, go on eBay. Go in your second-hand stores and thrift stores. Go in your charity shops. Because you'll be giving money to a charity or in a good cause. Donate your old books to libraries and good causes. Gift them to friends. Gift them to family. That's being real. Because consumerism is a major problem, and I'm the first to admit I have a problem with that. I do like buying things. And I do like buying books. Have I bought books on a whim and regretted it? Yes. Which is why I try and find writers through the library. I have found some of my favourite books and writers through the library. The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo was a library read. Let's be honest here. Philip Pullman as a child was a library read. You know, can't get much better than that, can we? I'm looking at my bookshelves. Bret Easton Ellis, when I was a teenager, was a library read. I read less than, no, Rules of Attraction when I was 15. My humble opinion is ignore these clowns. These air quote socialist clowns that cry about this stuff on the internet but shame you for wanting to save money. 
the disconnect between reality of what people have and what they are willing to spend is quite amazing. Just because someone earns X amount on paper doesn't mean they have that in their bank. Case and example, me. I earn quite a lot of money every year, but most of my income is pulled back into work commitments, into a house, into heating, into bills. And when we live in an age where people are paying several hundred pounds a month for gas and electricity, why should they worry about paying you you've you know if you're from a uk library you're getting your money if you've already got a residual you've already got paid screw it why should we why should we in your lovely la condo and i had a look at it online by the way it's it's lovely well but why should we we have enough money problems and a luxury of reading a book from a library at least you got paid for that sale on the most basic level wholesale but at least you got paid for it because there are so many people that will just go on bit torrent or pirates bay or whatever and i don't support piracy by the way but i will say if it's out of print if it no longer exists anywhere if it's a public domain or it purely has just vanished from existence which many things have sometimes you have no choice Let's be honest. But people have enough financial worries and burdens and frustration. And as a creative, yes, it's nice to get paid for your work. And you have been paid from the library. But let's be real. Library use is quite small. In actual overall sales library usage is very small libraries are fundamentally important to a community they are fundamentally important to a towns even my little suffolk library is fundamentally very important would you like to know why it has services for parents and their children fun crazy days and afternoons and weekend events it has services for the elderly, book clubs, it has craft sections, it has Dungeons and Dragons, it has services for the disabled and free public access to the internet. Especially for people, and it runs classes and courses. The library is fundamentally one of the most important areas in my town, and despite the effect the 2020 had and the budget cuts, it is still fundamentally important. I think this discrediting of libraries because, what, you're not getting a penny? Your royalties on these books are not great. And like I said, library use is there for a reason. It frustrates me when people on the internet get super entitled and freak out because people want to read books and have knowledge that might not necessarily be accessible to them. I know people in my life who are struggling. I know people who are living off very little. And before everyone chimes in that Amazon is the great evil, which I do agree, think of the people, and Amazon has its place, think of the people who can't leave their homes. Think of the people that can't get out. Think of those people. Amazon, all of these things are very valid, but to shut down discussion of libraries of freeloading as this, as that, is gross and repugnant. This guy is out of touch. This guy clearly has no comprehension of actually how the world works. And this guy is a complete moron. It, it really does frustrate me no end. Because, yeah, making money out of your hobbies is good. You hear that at the beginning of this episode, and I hold my hands up. But sometimes... Sometimes... It's a... Well, let's be real. How much money do we have? How much money do we literally have in our pockets? 
Like, what are we spending it on? Where is... What are we doing? Look at the price of food. Look at gas. Look at electricity. Let's be honest. Look at those prices. Look at everything going up. So what's wrong with going to the library and having fun? What is wrong with that? What about the little old lady who lives off a pension? It, it frustrates me because these people that call themselves leftists, that call themselves woke, call themselves, you know, fight the patriarchy. We must destroy capitalism are usually the ones crying about this on the Internet. But they expect and they expect you that they're entitled to to it all. There is something so wrong with this picture, and there is something so unbelievably wrong. <laughs> Full stop. Public libraries are fundamentally important in ways that even I, in this short bonus episode, have to say is important. How many of us found our great loves of our life when reading? How many of us? How many of us found those books that we love, that we enjoy, that we that we have gone back to? How many of us have found writers that we adore? How many of those books would we have not read if it wasn't for the library? Like, this is my opinion. Supporting your local library is important. They support writers. They host writing events. They they really go deep on this stuff. And as a writer, I would be very honoured that people were getting my book out of the library. That's me being honest. That is me saying this. How, like, who has, you know, I want to buy two hardback books. Oh, that's going to be £50. £25 a pop. No. It just really frustrates me because I see this repeat of drama and pattern and... People are either willingly ignorant, don't know how to Google, or just in this case, basic classism. I know this video is a bit... It's frustrating because I've seen the same thing and in the same book community that cries about consumerism and people having all these books but then shames people for libraries. I've seen that drama happen. I've seen the hypocrisy of BookTube firsthand. Like, ignorance is bliss, I suppose, with many of these people and they realise that not all of us have... The huge amounts of money. Some of us have disabilities. Some of us have permanent medical problems. Some of us... Some people will literally live hand to mouth because they're desperately trying to feed their children. It's, it's not rocket science. This is not rocket science. So... I'm going to leave this little bonus episode here. It's short and sweet and to the point. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Tell me what you think in the comments below. And I will talk to you later. Bye.